Hey guys, welcome back to 90 Feet From Home. I'm your host, Ashley. And today we're gonna pick up on something that we started out with in our very first episode, where I talked about hits, walks, runs, RBIs. And today we're gonna get a little bit more advanced and we're gonna talk about batting average, on-base percentage, slugging, and then we're gonna get a little bit more advanced and I'm gonna talk about on-base plus slugging and OPS plus, which is kind of an advanced stat, but I think once we get through the first little bit of this, it'll be pretty easy for you guys to figure out. Before we jump into this, if you haven't watched that video on hits, walks, at bats, and all of that, I'm gonna suggest you jump below. I'm gonna leave a link there and watch that video because it does deal with some of the basic statistics that we're gonna deal with here. So if you're not sure what constitutes an at bat, what constitutes a hit, that sort of thing might be good for you to know. Jump down below into the description box, watch that video first. If you already feel comfortable with those basic stats, let's get started on what batting average is. Batting average is the most basic of the batting statistics. And it's calculated very simply by taking all of a player's hits and dividing them by their at-bats. So it really is that easy. You look at how many times a player gets to the plate and has a successful hit. And it actually happens less than you might think because a player with a 300 batting average, which is considered to be very good, means they've only actually collected a hit three out of every 10 times they go to the plate. Now, Ted Williams, a Hall of Famer and considered to be one of the greatest hitters of all time, once said something that I think really summarizes this beautifully. A 300 hitter, that rarest of breeds these days, will go through life with the certainty that he will fail at his job seven out of ten times. And I thought that really nicely summarized what a good batting average is. It really just means that you are unlucky over half the time and three out of ten times or four out of ten times you get up there, you have success. On-base percentage is considered to be a slightly more valuable stat than batting average alone because it does take into account some things that batting average does not. Where batting average only considers hits, on-base percentage factors in any result aside from an error that gets a batter onto base. On-base percentage considers not only hits, but also walks, intentional walks, and hits by pitch. Basically the most common outcomes that would see a hitter getting onto base. Kind of literally right there in the name, on-base percentage. It gives a more complete picture of a batter's success because in terms of scoring runs, a walk is just as good as a hit when it means you're getting on base. So the math here is a little bit more involved and I'm gonna throw it up on the screen but it's basically your hits plus your walks plus your hit by pitch divided by your at bats plus your walks plus your hit by pitch plus sacrifice flies. And when you do the math there, which I will not do because I'm not a math brain person, that's how you calculate a player's on-base percentage. Now, slugging is the big boy of the batting statistics. And I actually kind of like how this one's done. Slugging considers all the bases gained by a batter and gives extra weight to extra base hits, basically scoring the value of each base as being higher than the last. Single base hit will give you a certain value. A double, which means getting to second base, will double the value that you receive. A triple, triples the value that you receive, and a home run quadruples it. So here's what the formula for that looks like. I know it's a little bit daunting. But when you break it down by understanding that each base gained gives you one multiplier extra, then you can kind of understand how they're valuing the extra base hits here. The value here of this stat is that it really tells you when you have a power hitter who's able to get more of those extra base hits throughout a season, because then their value is expressed by a higher slugging percentage. So if you actually add together your on-base percentage and your slugging percentage, you are now adding in everything from your hits, your walks, your hit by pitch, and then also factoring in those weighted points for extra base hits. So when you add your slugging percentage and your on-base percentage together, you get another statistic, which is referred to as on-base plus slugging, which gives then a much more complete picture of a batter's overall values. Because on-base plus slugging is literally your on-base percentage plus your slugging percentage added together, it's not usually reflected when you're looking at a player's line, but it is a more complete number that represents their total value. Typically when looking at a batter's statistics, it's represented in terms of what's called a slash line or a triple slash. I'll throw an example up and it basically gives you their batting average, their on-base percentage, and their slugging divided by slash lines. So when a player is said to have slashed a certain value, what they're referring to is the combination of those three statistics. On-base plus slugging isn't usually shown there because it's just adding those final two numbers together. What they've done, however, those fun stat brain people, is that they've turned on-base plus slugging into a different statistic known as OPS plus, which is adjusted OPS. 
And this number actually factors in something that the other ones don't in that it takes into account external factors like parks because some parks are actually better and more suited to those extra base or home run hits because shortened out fields or different factors like that that sometimes make parks more hitter friendly. By factoring in the external forces and turning it into a number based around 100, you're able to get a more easy to read number that's able to tell you how good a player is in comparison to the league average. When you look at a number like OP PS plus 100 is considered to be the league average. So if a player has a 130 OPS plus, that means that they were 30% better than the average player in the league. Anything over 100 is considered to be very good because it's better than average. Anything below 100 is considered to be not so great because it means they're not even meeting up to the average. And again, OPS plus is adjusted for park factors, so it is a more genuine portrayal of a player's actual value overall. Now, later we're going to get into two stats that are even more advanced than this and fact factor in a whole bunch of other things, and those are WOBA, which is weighted on base average, and WRC plus, which is weighted runs created plus. I'm not going to get into these right now because we're looking at really basic statistics, but of all of them, weighted runs created plus, WRC plus, is considered to be the most advanced measurement of a player's actual contributions on the field. It's a huge topic and there's a lot of different things that go into it mathematically, so for now, just stop at OPS plus before you get really bogged down in things because it's definitely good enough to get you started when talking about baseball players and understanding their quality on the field. Really, in order to understand the most basic box scores and discussions about the game, just knowing batting average is a great place to start, but being able to talk about batting average, on-base percentage, and slugging percentage means that you understand how the value is calculated by factoring in everything from walks, runs, hit by pitches, to a player's ability to get those extra base hits. And with that, we've actually covered all of the most basic parts of a box score when it comes to batting. So now you guys are kind of pros when it comes to talking about the most basic parts of batting statistics. Now, while we're still talking about OPS Plus, I want to give like a concrete example of how it plays out in the actual game. So if we look at a player like Mike Trout, who's widely considered to be one of the best players in baseball, his OPS for 2018 was 199, meaning he was 99% better in the category of OPS Plus than, the, than any average player in baseball. That is like bonkers good. As far as all time, Babe Ruth has the all time OPS plus record at 206, which is his career OPS plus, which is it means he's 106% better than every average player during his time frame. That's nuts. As always, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, head down to the comments and let me know what you liked. If there's any topics you want to see discussed in future episodes, or if you just want to say, hey, I always reply to those. So feel free to leave a comment, uh, hit subscribe, hit that bell next to subscribe if you want to be notified every time we have a new episode out, which is every Tuesday and Thursday. Follow me on social media. I'm at 90 feet from home on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And I hope you'll join us in our next episode. So thanks so much and have an awesome day. Bye.